Now in today's video, I'm gonna show you how we turn this into this. But maybe more importantly, if you've got an unused space in your house or garage, how could you possibly turn that into the perfect all year round golf simulator? And how much would it cost? Right, so there's two major investments that you're gonna to need to make. One being the hidden enclosure and the second being the launch monitor. And we've taken a short trip to a company that can provide you with both. I've come down to what is the perfect place to find everything indoor golf simulator you can imagine. We're here at Golf Bays and I will take a close look at both the enclosure that we purchased and our launch monitor, but maybe more importantly, a launch monitor and enclosure for every budget and every requirement. Right, Harrison, welcome to the channel. And you're gonna give us some advice to our viewers on kind of budgets and also what they what they get for the money. And I'm gonna start off with the enclosures. You do something that's called Simbox. Yes. Before we talk about the costs, what is, what is Simbox all about? So our whole premise with Simbox was effectively bringing at home golf simulation to the masses. Previously, it's been quite an exclusive thing where it costs a lot of money to put and yeah, construct yeah. the whole room. Um, so our whole theory behind the Simbox was to create something that was light, portable, affordable, and the biggest thing for us that we can get it to our consumers fast as well, so we can offer next day delivery on that product. I'll throw a few clips up now of uh, well, myself and Lewis actually putting this thing together. It's very simple and easy, it's quite intuitive in terms of uh, nicely labelled in terms of how you put this thing together. And also the idea that you can sort of dismantle it and take it down if you've got limited space or a, or a dual use of space. I'll throw up a lot of links to the sort of costs of the actual sim box and that's going to vary dependent basically on the size of the enclosure that you want but the next thing and the other big investments is then going to be the actual launch monitor yeah. that you decide to purchase and there's a huge variation in terms of costs so again from a budget perspective where does it where does it start so it's going to start with something like the Garmin R10 yeah so that retails at around 450 to 500 pounds it's really small it's portable you can use it indoors and outdoors so you can yeah. take it to the range or use it at home and what, what in terms of the data that it collects it's good it's good data yeah um, it's its only limitation is that it's a one radar system it's okay. quite a small radar okay um, so it's not going to be as accurate as some of the more expensive things yeah, yeah. but in terms of you know an affordable launch Fun monitor money, yeah. to get into the game yeah. that is perfect and the idea it's so small as well to carry in your golf bag and take with the range again is a real sort of flexible That's option it, yeah. and then from there what's the next leap up then so the next at? one up uh, we're looking at the flight scope mevo plus okay and the skytrack both right. priced both priced at around two thousand pounds yeah uh so the only the only way that you would kind of separate them both mm. is space. Okay. So if you're limited front to back uh, in your simulator space, yeah. then you would want to go for the Skytrack because okay. it sits next to the golf ball. Got you. Uh, the Mevo Plus sits behind as it's a radar based system. So that would be the real only and from memory, I've used this in the past, it's, it's almost it's about 10 foot behind. The yeah, sort of it's about slide. 9, 10 foot behind, yeah. yeah. But you can use it indoors and outdoors. But that's an important thing to remember and a great difference between the two there. As you say, I'm very much on the same budget. And then really, there's a bit of a leap, isn't there, to the kind of there is, yeah. the next step up. There's nothing, <laughs> yeah. there's no in between. And maybe what, GC3 or something? Is that Yeah, kind so of? the next one would be the Foresight GC3, yeah. priced at around £8,000. Uh, for that, you're going to get a lot more data, yeah. uh, a lot more accurate data as well. Yeah. Good thing about the GC3 is, um, as you know, you can use it on the range, you can use it at home, or you can take it out on the golf yeah. course as well. So yeah. it's loads of different uses. Yeah. Well, again, just as a from a personal reference, you know that we've got GC3 in the studio. We actually take it out yesterday for the first time on a course. And it was great to just get that immediate access to data. Yeah. Literally, as soon as you've hit a shot, within seconds, it's giving you numbers on a screen. You don't have to have a laptop with you or anything else. So that was really. Uh, interesting from our perspective and then again there's another quite significant leap up again isn't yeah, it? another big jump so the next jump would be your Trapman 4s and your GC Quad 
Um, again, so that's going to be the Trackman full start at around £17,000 yeah. and go up to £21,000 depending on indoor outdoor software. Same price point for the GC quad. Yeah. Um, that's, you know, that's a serious bit of kit. Yeah, it is, yeah. We coach with them all day, every day, multiple yeah. guys on you know, they uh, up and down the country coach them every day and you see guys on tour using them as well. Yeah. So it's, it's I a think big e jump. even from my perspective, when we film on the channel every week, we found out that Trackman 4 was, the, the, the detail it gave yeah. was far too great for what, what sort of I required. But obviously it's great to have that option. So the, the final thing I was going to say is that I know that from a, you do sort of a combination of um, launch monitor and sim yeah. box together, yeah. don't you? So that's something to, for viewers to have a look at if this is something they're serious about. Yeah, so we do a few different Simbox bundles. Uh, they, they start from around £1,900. So that yeah. is a Simbox enclosure, a hitting mat, uh, and the cheapest one would be a Garmin R10. Yeah. So you get all that for £2,000. The only thing that you'd need is to buy a projector. Yeah. And then you're, you're up and away and you can start playing golf, yeah. Certainly not a bad option, right? We've got some idea in terms of budgets. What we're next gonna do is just have a look a little round uh, what we've got behind us, because it's a pretty impressive area you've got, so it'd be rude yeah. not to have a go ourselves. Sounds good. Okay, so that was great to visit Golf Bays, and uh, I've got to say, they've got everything golf simulator you could ever imagine, and more, to be quite honest with you. Um, what I've learned from kind of what we've done in terms of this setup, the sim box, as they call it, the hitting enclosure, is really paramount to get that right. I think if you want some longevity in what you buy, the quality of this thing is really top draw and a good, wise investment. Then you're looking at um, the launch monitor. It started off, like we said, at that Garmin R10 at 500 quid, and obviously there'll be limitations within it, but it provides you with a great starting point and collect some basic numbers that you're gonna require. Then looking at what sort of software is available that you wanna see on your screen, if you like, in this sort of simulator uh, realm, and that again does increase dependent on sort of what simulator you launch monitor rather you decide to purchase. So they're the kind of things you've got to consider. As you know here, we're using GC3, some great software, some great analysis in terms of data. But obviously we used it in a sort of professional capacity in terms of what we do here on YouTube. So maybe not the kind of extremes that you'd want to go to. I just do not know. It all depends very much, like I said, on the budget you're looking to work with. We've, uh, again, going back to the where we started with this room and I'll throw up another picture now for you. Obviously the big thing was a good old clear out. We painted the walls black, which is a great effect in terms of filming, but in terms of uh, the sort of simulator space, I think works really well. There's some boards, acoustic panels that we've got behind me, which again, are just aesthetically just dressed the place up a little bit. We've also got TV on the wall, projector above us, and we're now pretty much uh, good to go. Everything is, uh, is uh, as good as we could have hoped for. So from an indoor space for us, it's perfect. If you could build this in your home, then I'm sure you'd be delighted. Anyway, thanks as ever for watching. Let me know your uh, own experiences in terms of what you've perhaps purchased in terms of building your own simulator space. And uh, don't forget, those comments help your fellow golfers and guide them in different directions, maybe something we've missed or overlooked. So I always appreciate you getting involved in the comments. Hit that like button. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all soon.